UK in the early 1950s, and this was the very much full market six cylinder two litre engine in 1963. It just preceded the Triumph 2000, uh, but this one, uh, the standard Vanguard, one, probably almost running as a test bed with that six cylinder two litre engine under the body for the later uh, Triumph 2000. Just about to look next one to look is an MG. In 1954, in the early and mid 50s, the Austin range included the Somerset the Devon. The Somerset was a slightly larger of the two cars. This one with a 1200cc engine with a very comfortable five seater body, a large boot. Uh, they were a popular car, and that's in the lovely condition of many, many, many sunroofs we've had to work. Uh, it's got the sliding sunroof and the visor over the windscreen. Bill Minnick, to follow on, this was the car that was going to be planned in Scotland, uh, and a completely new design of vehicle to take on head on the Mini. Rear engine, aluminium uh, head, uh, very comfortable little motor car. They had problems in the early days, teething troubles with dips and gearboxes, but uh, generally that will not sort of sorted out. The next one to follow on, trying to catch an upmarket car. Hillman, uh, Singer, uh, Humber, all produced vehicles in this way, and the uh, Singer was very much a classy version of a 5-seater. 1725cc five bearing push run engine, making it a very strong engine indeed. Big boots, good long legs on them, so it was a good all round motor car, very well appointed as well. Not that many of them have survived. The very good supporting members, they're always got them for it. And for Cortina, and then Lotus got hold of these, light, the bolt of the suspension, and put a 1598 twin cam engine and went racing and rallying with them. And this is a, a lovely example, very authentic. It runs the basic 1200cc engine. Uh, five adults in there, plus the luggage, very comfortable car. 10, 10 1949, beautiful condition. These were a luxurious, this was generally an automatic gearbox. Uh, you kind of select the next gear you want on a stroke on the steering column, and when you get to the point where you want to change, you just press the clutch as though it was a switch. And the Hebrewbars used to have one many, many years ago when I was at school, and it, uh, it was regarded as a very luxurious motor car. Very nice thing. We've lost in seven now. This one with a two-seater tourer body on. I built originally the empty engines of the day. A frightening little 747cc engine at the bottom with two bearings on the crank one at the front and one at the back. And don't be deceived, they're incredibly robust with lost in seven. Uh, many of them uh, still on the road, still being used for pleasure purposes, and also being the intention of competition for off road trials, circuit racing, a lot more out there too. Very comfortable uh, uh, accommodation for five adults with all the luggage in a car like that. Two till, nicely presented motor car, that lovely smooth six cylinder engine. Uh, standard, uh, the Vanguard in particular, were highly regarded. Standard is a sportsman six almost. It was regarded. Uh, very, very confident. Uh, loads of uh, window seals, uh, the early ones. Built around about 1969, 1970, and the Peely 3000s. This one built in 64 was really at the height of the BMC Works Rally Team. Usually, the people like the Team Rover used to be one of a number of cars that we've got in there. Back of the body. There's no boot whatsoever, that's absolutely typical of the cars 
of the 20s and into the 30s. So a luggage grid was put on the back for uh, your, your overnight and your holiday gear. Run by the North West Regional Secretary of the Morris Register. Said, what were the major owners of clubs about? Looks after its members. Great spare capability. Uh, Tom used to run a, a Morris 8 and uh, discovered this 10 pre open condition. He spent really the last couple of years bringing it back to show condition. He uses it on a regular basis on the road. Longer legs than the 8 obviously being 10 horsepower and a very unusual food bay body. The gum irons on the rear of the, uh, the, the body. Very able team. Tim and Ogre have uh, got the Sisley on the rim in the sporting machine with the 100 cc uh, car that was built by the Gondon to give them a real impact on the sort of smaller sports end. Tim also runs a big trailer to the Gondon and uses his cars extensively. We've just come back from a big trip over to uh, Rowetia, the Indian Coast in Italy. He loves his cars, he uses the famous Impressive. They are six seater, bench seat at the front, huge space inside, column change. These ran about a two and a half or a three litre six cylinder engine for the bottom, massive boot. You can see it's all very poor in the early 60s. Um, very few of these have survived, nearly all died as a result of metal rock. Um, but this is in lovely condition, a very unusual uh, would be a very comfortable one when it was a nice thing. A little unusual, very aerodynamic, sweat body, built in 1953. Sort of tail ends, aerodynamic tails like this were a very much a styling feature in the 1930s. Definitely kept his own. Forcing the invention under the bottom, lots of space inside the cars. And uh, Darrell was famous for using sort of air cooled engines. Probably the sort of sports during the end of the great piece. Like Riley something, an MG, that sort of sports saloon, and also the very comfortable machine. Very comfortable machine, and Morris Fine. It was one of those cars that really got a lot of people into the collection. Presentation, the world of the music, and now the doctor's convey. And here we've got a doctor's convey, the number 27. The left book is sort of playing one of the gentlemen playing. Manchester in the early part of the uh, 20th century. Secret bumper, all in the uh, roots and roots, and there was a fair amount of badge engineering going on at the time, with uh, some very differences here and there. This Mink runs a 1500cc engine, again a very capable motor car, capable engine, good five seater, decent boot on them, strong reliable engines, uh, properly maintained, and would last, would last a long, long time. Some very original ones here in 1951 model this, and onto which you could put your, your, your trunk or a picnic basket. A little bit lost in something like that. Cable brakes, front and rear, and fully fitted, handbrake works on the front brakes rather than the back brake, and something like that. It's a very nice example, it's a 7.7cc, tiny little engine on the bottom. It looks well on its uh, white wheels. 10 horsepower, 4 cylinder engine under the bottom, 4 speed gearbox, run all around motor car. Another example from Morris Fire, the is the doors at the back that you can get brand new wooden frames and you can put them back into a really nice condition like this one. 3738, pre war, side valve engine, 4 cylinder, 3 speed gearbox, single SU carburetor, this one in the saloon body. Nice four-seater, see no boot, so it's got a grip with its uh, picnic basket on the back. Been beautifully restored, this car, and that's in correct delivery. Uh, that, that's very much a works full of scheme, the uh, black over dark blue. I believe that one has come down from Scotland. Oh, no, we've got from West Cumberland, that's it. Come out from the coast, and the four cc Still has a little semaphore indicators. Uh, as opposed to flashing indicators just behind the front door. It's in traditional Morris Minor grey. Uh, so a very nice low bed valve, 94 HCC engine in there. Uh, and still a look at that, that is a Morris Minor. Yes, before the round one that we all recognised. In the early 1930s, 
that if it's a square car, it's absolute, and the two door machines, and obviously lots of similarities between this little Morris Minor two door uh, on top and the uh, Austin 7 we've seen, but it was from this car, the MG, the original MGM type midgets, and then the J2s, J3s, J4 midgets. A state car. My, my step, uh, father in law had one of these for many years. Grand thing it was. Uh, this is running the 997cc engine. Anglia's 105Es had either the 997 or the 1200 engine in them. A good useful motor car, and it's close. A very simple organisation for 105E Anglia's. Uh, many, many spares readily available. They don't cost huge amounts of money to go out and buy one, so if anybody wants it, uh, built in 1934 with an 1125 cc engine, a good four-seater, four-door saloon, so plenty of space, lots of room in the back. There's never any problem with with foot room in these because, of course, they didn't have a boot. But this one has a spare wheel in a, in a proper spare wheel cover, a nice luggage grid out the back onto which you can put your picnic trunk. So a nicely turned out example. Next one up, very desirable motor car here with the Alvis, just post-war, built in 1948, manufacturers in Coventry. Pre-war, they produced a whole range of sporting and fast touring cars, and here was the post-war example, uh, an open-top tourer, family tourer, and quite a large body on this Alvis. Alvis continued to make smart, sports saloons and roadsters into the 1950s and early 1960s and that's quite a rare piece, that's the old TA-14 rockhead. TA-14 door, uh, saloon body, Austin Ruby, very popular car of the day. Little 747cc engine under the bonnet, see the nice sliding head, uh, to a bit more ventilation for the, the driver, well presented, sitting nice and square on its seat. What appears to be uh, more than capable of flying about on terrain like this is the Austin 7. It's just designed to, to soak up the uh, rough roads that were around in 1950. Not as bad as the uh, Well, in the 20s, he was a racing driver. He decided to start building his own cars. You notice as it goes round that the rear track the, is a lot narrower than the front track, i.e. the axle at the front appears to be a lot wider than the one on the back, and it is. And these are a chain drive, right? so they're very much a motorsport in mind. And strong sort of uh, members club with these, they do a huge amount of sort of continental tours and, and sporting trials. The room I factored about this time. But the standard big nine, built in 1932, 11 horsepower, just a, a, a good all-round family car. Again, no boot. I think you recall travelling miles and miles in the back of one of those in Dublin. Never seen to go fast enough when you power engine. Instead of the 11 horsepower engine. But nevertheless, more than careful of taking four or five people in reasonable comfort. Complete with all the grip, a super uh, wicker basket on there. Quick all around car the, the stand. Savage always had decent engines under the bonnet. And uh, well, that one went on to become the Vanguard, that's where we really got there. Another little more top of the range model, the Hawk itself is a C6 seat, big bench seat, a bottom change. Uh, this was used uh, by the government as a sort of diplomatic car. And clearly it was uh, you know, run by the county set of people who had the wealth and sometimes see it with little horse pockets behind and thing like this. And all that without even noticing. Very cool, powerful one to go, very well built for these numbers, um, but went out of production before the end of the 1960s. We've lost the name 40. Two four door. Oh dear me, I took my driving test in one of those. We used to call it a two plus. I'm pretty corrected on something which I seriously don't understand. <laughs> An A30 with four doors. Anyway, there it goes. The little A30 had the tiny back window, the 35 had the big back window for those who are desperately interested. That's running the failure 8 or 3 cc engines, and that's four cylinders, 1600 cc's approximately. Uh, 
Uh, Riley, uh, this is the odd wrench on the bonnet, so the blue diamond on the front will be a light blue. A real anorak here. Uh, it's two and a half litres round with a, a light blue, blue diamond, Riley badge, and the one and a half with the dark blue. I know that because never across the road had them for years. I always fancy the two and a half and could never afford one. We have lots of one and a half. Nice car, gentlemen's sporting saloon. Built by Riley, who've got a tremendous heritage in competition. Next one to go, behind the, uh, the, the driver and passenger in the front seats. I think you see some very, very popular on the tours and roadsters. Just looks like a brute, it would actually open up with two extra seats in there. Uh, the Triumph Roadster was built with an 1800 and a two litre engine. This has got the two litre. Uh, very smooth, uh, a very comfortable motor car with a proof all day long at 67 miles an hour. Everybody started calling them the Bergerac cars, but they were around a long time before that ever happened. It's in 1926, very much 1920 styling. Look at the, the wheels on those big steel artillery wheels, big steel spoke wheels. In 1926, it had front brakes. Well, Humber was a very upmarket car, so they could probably afford front brakes, people who bought Humber. So in the mid 1920s, not a lot of people in the front brake. I've not seen one of these in a long time, so what a privilege it is to see it here in Cumbria. 1950 this was built, especially bodied by Tickford. Tickford were coach builders, used a range of bodies for a whole number of motor manufacturers. And here is Rover with its 75, which was highly regarded, preceded by the 60, the 75, and the 100, the 110. Very, very unusual coach built body by Tickford on there. 2.1 litres, 6 cylinder saloon car. And here it is in its tourer or alpine tourer form. I came across this car a few weeks ago somewhere else and I was having a quiet look at it. It is absolutely beautifully restored inside and out. There's not a lot of room in there. There are two big guys sat in the front of it when I was looking at it. Uh, but it's a beautiful thing. Little side valve, low 72 cc engine from Ford. Nice uh, box hole to follow. A Cresta. Built in 1961, this one with a 2.6 litre engine under the bonnet, two tone, again, three seat at the front, three at the back, column change, very American influence. I'm not sure whether this guy didn't pull up alongside me at Easter time when I broke down at the roadside. I was thinking with my car, got it going, I stood around to make sure I did, and off I went again. So, a very nice example. Where you would get the glass for the windscreen now, or a rear window, couldn't have thrown in off, but they do apparently, but they are able to see it. Nice. So, okay, here we have Crosley with uh, one of their smaller vehicles. They made some small ones. They made some big uh, sports cars, two sports tourers and saloons. And this little Crosley four-door tourer from 1932 with a 10 horsepower engine. Put folks down the side of the mountain and then smash the car on the good days. Uh, but it is, I uh, don't think, virtually unique. 10 or 40s. This one built in 1949. These were very popular. They were made in quite significant numbers by then. They, they grabbed the top end of the normal luxury ones, the Mark 6, all steel body and things. Uh, suffered uh, quite extensively from body rock in its day. Uh, but it had that wonderful bend engine. Another Vauxhall to follow on Brethren has rotted away. The Vauxhall uh, into a 101. Uh, this is the top of the range 101 estate, built in 1965. It's out They really, this is just when Vauxhall were going through that period when they got back. V6, it's a monster of a machine. Uh, they were used very, very widely by the police for motorway work, these cars, a lot of kept in private ownership. V6, it looked like an aircraft carrier. Um, and the, the family have had one or two of these over the years, and that's probably uh, the nicest one that I've seen in British Cumbria. So it's a lovely thing. V6, look at the length of that. Look about American influence. 
and the fruits of uh, how many gallons to the mile. So I managed to see it going round now with some just glinting on it. Look at the green pen. Great work. Huge. Three seats at the front, three in the rear, and a great big boot behind it as well. And these things will be lost on.